Good morning and welcome. Welcome to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, and Calvin Butenhoff coming to you live from our studio in sunny, warm downtown Waukesha, wherever you are across the state, the country, the globe. Whoa. You can join us at 855-752-4842. Leave a comment if you're watching in the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter. If you would like to download the free Civic Media app, you can do that wherever you get your apps. And then you can call and text directly from the app. I honestly, I know we've talked about this before, but I just find that feature to be so cool. It is. Just like, you know, I want to text it. Boom, I'm texting now. And, and you can listen to all the shows across all of the stations, no matter where you are. Again, across the state, around the around the country, around the world. I want to, someone on the International Space Station to listen to us. That would be so cool. It really would. Yeah. That'd be amazing. It, Let's make that happen. Calvin. Calvin, make that happen. <laughs> you yeah. have contacts at NASA, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's full Cal- of young people there. Cal- yes. Calvin will get right on that. Um, as always, again, if you want to join us, 855-752-4842. Dr. Laura Hanks will be here at 1133 with public cervix announcement. If you have a question for her, you can always send it in to Jane Says, J-A-N-E-S-A-Y-S, Jane Says, at civicmedia.us. Going to start off, though, with, uh, it's a good day in Wisconsin, my friends. Oh, man. It is I, a good, good day. I should have clipped it from the West Wing, but victory is ours. Victory is ours. <laughs> we drink from the keg of glory, friends. Bring me the finest bagels. We have some ways to go. Yeah, we're not, we're not done yet. This is the battle. This is the battle. Uh, and the fact that Wisconsin voters pretty soundly rejected yes. those two constitutional amendments. So many thank yous to say. Deborah Cronmiller mm-hmm. and all the people over at the League of Women of uh, Women Voters Wisconsin. She came on with us many times yeah. to talk about this and explain what these constitutional amendments would do. Uh, they came out with a statement this morning. Today's results. This is from the League of Women Voters Wisconsin. Today's results show how when we come together, we can win. The vague and unnecessary amendments would have created confusion and real delays in getting emergency relief to communities in need, we the voters turned out to show Wisconsinites care about each other. Yeah. We care about our beloved small businesses, the schools our children attend, our environment, our infrastructure, and the countless other things that federal funds support. Yeah, and I, I completely agree. I think it was, you know, it was reminiscent of uh, Janet Protosewicz's, uh election results where I pulled it up. Uh, the AP, and I just saw the numbers. I'm like, all right, here we get. Oh, okay. It, so far, it's like it was, I was I was watching it at about like 25 percent of the precincts reporting. Mm-hmm. And it was already showing that the support on the no side was good. Was good. And by the time like I saw the results that you texted me, I was like, okay, this was a victory. Yes, this was not hard scrabble fight. This wasn't neck it wasn't and neck. close. This was. A sound rejection of policies, not policies, because they couldn't get it done policy-wise. A sound rejection of the GOP trying to hoard more power from themselves by covering up in the vein of a slush fund. I'm never going to stop talking about that because I thought it was so disingenuous to call it that. Derek Van Orden called it that. Robin Voss called it that. It wasn't a slush fund. This is money to help the people of Wisconsin. In an emergency. And guess what? Whether or not you voted for Tony Evers, that money's going to help you maybe too. So good on Wisconsin with every, excuse me, with every election, I get more hope and more pride. Absolutely. Yeah. I also want to give a shout out to Jim from Appleton who had emailed us at Jane says at civicmedia.us. And we mentioned this yesterday. Jim is the one who pointed out again, in regard to these constitutional amendments, the Republicans tried to essentially bamboozle us with because that's how i look at it in 1929 the u.s suffered from a stock market crash that led into the next great depression responding to this the federal government began sending aid money to the states at that time all spending went through the legislature Mm -hmm. by the 1930s state representatives realized that putting federal relief funds through that body was taking up time and ineffective at getting out the aid where it was needed so they passed a law allowing the governor to distribute those funds to the places of greatest need. It's been in place for 90 plus years and it's been working just fine. Yep. Yeah. It's been working 
just fine. Yeah, we've had Republican, Democratic governors, legislature, representatives, state, all the things, and no one has said there's a problem here. If there was a problem, we would have. There should have been an investigation, but there wasn't a problem. No, there was no investigation. But once again, it's the GOP who just can't get their things done on the floor of the of the assembly and the Senate. So they're going to ramrod these things down our throats. And th- earlier this year did not work out as well. I believe I, you know, I'm nervous about the election as the processes. Yes, but this is a sound rejection of that sort of narrow-minded, selfish attitude. Is it that people are finally waking up to the way the Republicans try to go around regular processes? Are we finally going, you know, this sounds, this sounds like I said, snaky. This sounds, they're trying to slip these things in to a not very large turnout primary in August when yeah. people are still on vacation so are people, are folks just waking up? I think it is. I think it is. Um, you know, and, and I said this on Pat's show earlier this morning and, you know, by no means am I this show or even civic media, I want to like take credit. But what I think what we did do was play a part in opening the conversation, talking about these issues, having real, like, you know, Deb, Deb Crom Miller mm-hmm. and the others to talk about this and really explain it in a way that the language of the amendments couldn't. And then people took that information and talked to their friends and then they saw ads explaining it. So I think it was, you know, amendments aren't sexy. Amendment ballot measures aren't sexy, but when they're happening so often people notice them. So this is the, these are now the third and the fourth we're voting on this year. And apparently there are more coming. There may be another one on the November ballot. So I've been in touch with the league of women voters, Wisconsin. And as soon as, that gets finalized and uh, they're done. They're ready with their toolkit. We're yeah. going to, we're going to talk about that because obviously they're not done trying this yet. I think when it comes down to it now, we're no longer, we, we are now in a place, at least Wisconsin, where we don't just view the presidential election as the important one. We we're starting to see all of them as important and, and people are waking up people are, are in, in educating themselves and helping educate their friends and yes. family on the matter. So, and talking about it over and over again you know we we don't want to apologize for talking about these things because we find them important whether it's the ballot measures or project 2025 mm-hmm. or you know whatever we feel you need to know but yeah people are getting engaged and you can feel it that's that that those poll res, th- those election results show it do we have i don't know that we have any specific numbers on turnout because again, this is typically a pretty low voter turnout yeah. election, Calvin. Maybe you can take a look for that. I wanted to share this. This is from an article in the today's Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. And one of the reasons, again, why we wanted to vote no on this was so that emergency money wouldn't get tied up in the legislature as they take another six month vacation. Mm-hmm. And so there's this paragraph in this article from the Journal Sentinel throughout March and April of 2020, lawmakers refused to come into session to make decisions about portions of the CARES Act that were not under the governor's sole discretion. Leaders did not schedule floor sessions until the middle of April, three weeks after the CARES Act was passed. And because of that, Wisconsin lost $25 million in federal money to help pay for unemployment benefits during the pandemic because the Republicans who control the legislature sat on it. Yeah, and that, you know, we discussed that earlier this morning, and it reminded me of the conversation we had with Sachin Chetta two days ago, Monday. 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 Seems like a year. Uh, and speaking about the education funding, that's, you know, this edu- the, the education funding isn't going through, but the measures are going through because they have to. They're right. voted on, so they need to be funded. and. We can lose funding if we don't act quickly. Because there are windows on this exactly. money. Exactly. So I don't know. I mean, this is a question I, I we, we should probably maybe, I don't know who to ask, but we can find an expert on this, which is the $125 million for PFAS. If we don't utilize it, does that go away? Does the money for the hospitals go away? Does the money for education go away? If they go away, then we're sort of up a creek sans paddles. So it's important for the joint finance committee to just get off their butts, release the money that's been voted on, on a bipartisanship and approved bipartisanship on a bipartisan, on a bipartisan measures and approved and supported too. 
No one's grumbling or gritting their teeth or or holding their nose. Well, apparently a few people are. <laughs> well, they shouldn't have the power then. So, yeah, I think Tony on the live stream said it best. I think repetition is so important. It is. Well, and because, again, we realize that you have a life. Yeah. And you have kids. What's that and like? you have grandparents and you have siblings and places to go and yeah. jobs to do and things to see. And so... If you're a regular listener, we really appreciate it. If you just dip in in and out every once mm-hmm. in a while, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I am just so hopeful. And I'm proud of them, too. I'm proud of all of us. I'm proud of you for doing what you did, folks. Yes. Very proud of you. Absolutely. You. You should, we should all feel pretty darn good, Kelvin. Buy yourself a bagel. Put it on me. They'll, they know who I am. So I have some numbers on the voter turnout. Um it was the highest voter turnout for a presidential year partisan primary yeah. in 64 years. Well done. The What's the number, number though? The number is not going to sound great. Okay. The number was 26%. Is that 4% higher than last time, I think? I will find the numbers on last time, but I, I just know it's the most in 64 years. Well, I hey, I, it's, it's step by step, friends. It's I'll little it's it. little by little. Yeah, baby steps, friends. But- that's really something. Yes, it is. It's and and speaks very highly again of Wisconsinites and their growing engagement. Mm-hmm. And as you pointed out too, Greg, I think a lot of times we think that the national elections are the most important ones. Yeah. But it's the ones that happen locally that have the most direct impact Absolutely. on on all of us. And Absolutely. that's why it's so important. That's why we tell you, be a voter. Be cool. Be a voter, baby. Everybody wants to be a voter. <laughs> Especially when you turn 18, register to vote. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, I just think, I think since the, you know, we new maps coming, I feel like new maps were the beginning. Of the, of the turnaround. Oh, yeah. And we're going to see more in November. I really have good hopes for November, so. We have more el- election results to cover. You can always join us. How do you think we hit, how, we, how do you think we did this? 855-752-4842. <laughs> You're listening to Matt Nair on air, coming to you across the Civic Media Radio Network. No, thank you, please. It only makes me sneeze. Then it makes it hard to find the door. Good morning and welcome back to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, and Sweet Kelby on the board coming to you from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can join us. Call or text at 855-752-4842. Leave a comment if you're watching on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and or Twitter. No, 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 baby. We did not want those constitutional amendments and they failed yes, they did. yesterday. Thank you so much, everybody in Wisconsin who voted no. Thank you so, so, so very much. We got a couple of texts on the li- on the on the text line. Uh Sue from Franklin said, Yes, you guys definitely helped get the information out there. Thank you. Go blue. And because she says it every day. Hi, Sherry hi, Hor- Sherry. in Horicon. Uh Jack from Merrimack listening on WAUK says, We don't need quote unquote amendments to further delay spending of critical funds. We do need an amendment that says once funding is approved by both the governor and legislature, those funds may not be delayed by any other means or committees. I agree with that. that that's, was, a, that's a great idea. They must be used by their approved purposes without inappropriate delays. That's Jack from Merrimack. Excellent point, yep, Jack, because right now the reason, as from what I understand, the reason why they're sitting on these PFAS money and the school funding money is because they're cranky about some procedural thing. Yeah. It's, as you pointed out, Greg, the money's been approved. It was a bipartisan measure. It's all been okay. It's ready to go. But they're like, no, you didn't cross that T. No. And I, I want a heart over all the eyes. If I give them people clean water, what will the, all the polluters have to do? Admit fault? No. Calvin? What's most frustrating about it is they 
control the Senate and the House. They passed the bill. I know. Why? They're the ones who didn't cross their T's, and now they're the ones upset about it. It's just ridiculous. Well, that's the, you know, honestly, like, I want to sit down with those Republicans who are not part of the Joint Finance Committee and say, hey, how does this feel not to be able to take this to your home districts and campaign on it? Seriously. Instead, you have to. Instead, you have to live with the embarrassment of people in your party holding up money for children, money for clean water, money for hospitals. How does that feel? It would be I it, it would be great if we could talk to some of those Republicans. Honestly, I would just I mean, yeah. I, and, I, and find out what they hear when they talk, if they talk to yeah. their constituents. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, well, now that there are fairer maps, they some of them have to work for a job now. You're gonna have to knock on doors. I know. By the way, did anyone by, I forgot to ask this up top. Has anyone chucked on Robin Voss today? Those um those amendments didn't go through everyone, and I'm just wondering if... Uh, and he really wanted everyone to vote yes. Well, he wants to be popular. He's not very popular, and the Popcorn King needs friends. We're going to try and get him there. I will. Hey, Rob. Robin. I'm right. sure he's fine. All right. Okay, cool. Sorry. A couple of other races. Calvin, have that ready, by the way. A um, couple of other races I wanted to uh, just include. In the 8th con Congressional District, of course, that's Mike Gallagher's old seat. Trump anointed... Businessman Tony Weed defeated State Senator Andre Jacques and former State Senator Roger Roth. AP called it about 10.30 last night. Weed with 40%, Roth pretty close at 35, Jacques way behind at 24, which surprises Very me. Very surprising to me. Yeah, that, Very. That, that's kind of a shocker. I think that speaks a lot to the fact that people don't know who their representatives are on the state level sometimes. Well, again, it's not necessarily all that intriguing no and tony weed's definitely a guy who says i'm an alpha male if you want any idea of what he looks like he's like the eighth congressional district version of Eric Derek van orden no i don't think as so. far as being manly man i think there's they don't well yeah because they, they don't look, look alike that's no. not no that's not what i'm saying no this guy looks like he slings pills on instagram well, like, <laughs> to be more manly well, well it it's it's more of a I'm the alpha male guy yeah. kind of attitude yeah. that I think that the two have in common. Speaking of the third congressional district, Eau Claire business owner, Rebecca Cook, winning the Democratic primary. Shout out to the seer of all seers, Mr. Wise, wise man, Todd Alba. Yeah. And we talked about this when we were on the road a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. And he had a feeling that Rebecca Cook was going to was going to end up with the uh, with it. And she did. Got a little fiery towards those last two weeks between the the well, just between Katrina Shanklin and and, and Rebecca, Rebecca Cook. Cook. But, uh, you know, Mark Pocan definitely had an opinion on this. And as of this morning, Mark Pocan, congressman of the second district here in Wisconsin, put out a tweet saying, all right, congratulations, Rebecca. Let's get going. Let's work. Let's defeat Derek Von Billy. I mean, Orton. Sorry. Uh, I know that I, I slip into that all the time. <laughs> Andrew in Maine said, since Dr. Lyerly won her primary, can we start calling her speaker of the house now? Not yet. We don't want to jinx it, <laughs> but <laughs> that will be, that'll be Madam Dr. Speaker of the house when she wins. When she wins. When she wins. Yeah. If, but I, yeah. Go ahead, Greg. No, no. I was going to say if I don't, I hate saying when, because if, this, yeah. if she doesn't win, I'm going to blame myself. What I was going to say is, I mean, I don't think. A Trump endorsement has really panned out for people since 2016. Mm. So this, him winning might, he might actually be the weaker candidate for Dr. Lyerly to go against. Interesting. I, yes. And that honestly, Calvin, that's exactly what they talked about this morning earlier is the fact that, you know, everyone couldn't help themselves, but to put Trump this Trump that on their yard signs. And it didn't really do anything for anybody. I mean, Tony weed won, but he's a popular businessman in the community. So I, I think it had more to the fact that he was known than Trump endorsed, and, and just wait to see that debate. Oh, if that if the debate happens, and also State Senator Dan Canodal of Germantown easily defeating election denier Representative Janelle Branchen, seventy eight percent of the vote in Canodal at sixty two percent, Branchen at thirty seven percent. Oh, is she calling it for an election steal? I and mean, that's the thing is, I, I'm sure. Have we got any calls about this? This like, was stolen. The stolen election on the on the amendments on anyone who didn't win because whenever your person doesn't win, it's stolen, right? Oh, exactly. So where exactly are they, there are there are five hundred mules, Janelle. Go find them. <laughs> Karina from Milwaukee is on the line. Good morning, Karina. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Um, I I I 
I have some idea, uh, but I'm not exactly sure that it's realistic. When you're talking guys about money, right, and we're saying, okay, so there is a committee where uh, sitting on education money or healthcare money or water bill money and stuff like that, then that money is supposed to go somewhere so the people are waiting for it. So why these organizations or I'm not saying why, or maybe we can pull them out and say, hey, can we organize rally by the Capitol with people from those who's waiting for this money and say, move already <laughs> and give us money? Because it looks like there are little mouses sitting there quietly on that you know, mountain of grain and hoping no one will see that mountain. You know? I mean, I, I, I get what I, I hear what you're saying yeah. too, Karina, but I still think the best way to do it is at the ballot box. Yeah. I do. that that, And it needs to be by an overwhelming number. And also those people who are affected by these bills, call the members of the Joint Finance Committee. Call, call your representatives. Yep. Go to myvote.wi.gov. We're not going to stop talking about that either. Don't expect them to pick up. They're on vacation. News is coming up next when we return. Childless cat ladies. Got a couple events coming up. Stay here. You're listening to Matt Nair on air. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. A man I know just came from Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, he smiled because I did not understand. Then he held out some moonshine whiskey. Oh, he said it was the best in all the land. And I said, no, 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 I don't drink it no more. I'm tired of waking up. Good morning and welcome, welcome to Matt Nair on Air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, Dr. Slide on the board. Coming to you from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can always join us. You can call, you can text 855-752-4842. Leave a comment if you're watching on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, or the platform that Elon continues to actively ruin. If you have been watching the live stream, we're having some really strange camera action going on. Uh, Brendan... Listening on the live stream says, wow, cut that out, Greg. I thought I was having a stroke. I, I it, must it, have angered the robot overlords. It's It was, yeah, zipping back and forth. It was very strange. We've never seen that happen before. So we, we gave it a little time out. We gave it a little yeah. rest. So we'll, we'll come back to it later. Uh, baseball action. The Dodgers at the Brew Crew tonight. The broadcast starts at 635. You can catch the game live on WRCE in Richland Center. 107.7 FM, 1450 AM in Richland Center, and on WISS in Oshkosh, 98.3 FM, 1100 AM. Dodgers at the Crew. Broadcast starts tonight at 635. we got to win one of these games. Yeah, that would be good. Yes. It would definitely be good. All right. Thank you, everybody, for voting yesterday. That's a really, really good thing that those two constitutional amendments were defeated. Thank you. And for spreading the word and talking mm-hmm. to your friends and talking to your family. And that's what we're going to need to keep doing right up until November. Childless Cat Ladies have a meeting coming up next week. Fun. But first, Republican Vice Presidential nominee J.D. Vance will be stopping in Milwaukee on Friday to give remarks at the Milwaukee Police Association. That yeah, makes sense. Yeah. The Ohio Senator was in Eau Claire last week. At a very small event where they apparently even turned away people who had been invited to attend, which always uh, sounds like a really good campaign strategy. This is not going well for Judea. Thank you for coming. No, you can't come. But I have an invite. No. But, oh. Um, yeah. So he's coming back. Yeah. Friday, 11 a.m. At least this time he's coming here before... Tim Walls and Kamala come here. As opposed to stalking yeah, them on exactly. the campaign trail. Exactly. Yeah, because that's kind of what he did. Yeah. Ugh. Their first their first week out on out on the campaign trail. Weirdos. And by the way, uh cats, JD Vance has no problem with cats. Just women. Yeah, he never meant it to he never meant to offend cats. <laughs> just their owners. <laughs> you, 
We've gotten a lot of pushback on the cat voter block. <laughs> they don't like you, dude. No, they, they really don't. So Vice President Kamala Harris and Minnesota Governor Tim Walz will be rallying at Pfizer Forum next Tuesday. That's the second day of the DNC in Chicago. This is from today's Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. This would be Kamala Harris's third visit to Wisconsin since she became the Democratic nominee late last month. Yeah, she's... <laughs> They are not going to make the. There's arguments about whether or not Hillary not coming to Wisconsin lost or Wisconsin or like. There are a lot of people who believe that that was a big reason why. And there are some people who present good reasons why it wasn't as integral as people want to believe. But they're definitely not going to miss out this time because they know that basically it's going to come down to three, maybe four states this time, which I don't know if I like that much power, honestly. I, I've thought about that too. In one ways, in one way, I guess, yes, it's nice that we certainly have. A larger say, it seems, yeah. than than other states in the country. But that's also why we're constantly inundated with political ads and we're constantly in an election season. Well, and also it's like you only like us when you need us. <laughs> so come on, man. Don't I don't want to be texted you up by the candidates. Seriously. But yeah, we're I mean, that's going to be an amazing, amazing uh, the Pfizer. That's going to be a fun time. It would be great to see a <laughs> massive, massive turnout. Which, of course, will be all AI generated because. Yes. Holograms, cardboard cutouts, mannequins, or, you know, as the left needs to call them, personkins. Um, yeah, just there's going to be seven people there. And those are all the people who got turned away from the JD Vance. Now you have somewhere to go. Event. Yeah, exactly. At least. Uh, it's not immediately clear whether or not Tim Walls will be joining Kamala Harris in Milwaukee next Tuesday. Two sources familiar with planning. Say the details are still in flux. That tends to be very, that's not yeah. unusual at all. We don't know all the details until they tell us all the details. Right. So, and, and I'm, it's, I'm just glad to know we know the location this time. Right. Because a lot of times they'll wait until like the day before. Yeah. So I thought it would be just take a little time to compare the two choices for a vice president. Ah, yes, indeed. Indeed. A little com comparison shopping. Yeah. Compare, contrast. Compare, compress, uh, contrast. Uh, let's start with. Republican vice presidential nominee. He's fine with cats. J.D. Vance, Calvin, let's play that clip, please. We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies yes. who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. Yes. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? I wish I did needlepoint because I would put that on a pillow. That entire thing? Well, so now a shorter version. Yeah. Well, I mean, see here, Kamala Harris. Oh, she's a stepmother. She has two kids. Pete Buttigieg, twins. AOC doesn't have children yet, but you know, you never know. That's her choice for now but also let's see other people who are running america who don't have children glenn grothman that's true the republican congressman from this Wisconsin. robin voss doesn't have kids i don't know if he does or not does but he have kids oh boy if he does i don't um, think he does lindsey graham doesn't have kids i don't think tim scott has kids nope you know, I mean, and and George Washington never had no, children. George Washington, by his by his measure, George Washington is a childless <laughs> cat lady who had no interest in or investment in America's future. None. He just all. liked wearing wigs and fancy clothing. Bill from Oconomowoc is on the line. Good morning, Bill. Thank you for joining us. What did you want to say? Why do most Republicans have lack of integrity, honesty, and morals? And, of course, that would set them off making that statement. But I would back it up by saying, well, look, the best you've got has uh, 34 felony convictions, 26 sexual assaults, two impeachments, 11 bankruptcies. That's the best you can find in the morality of the political world, correct? Yeah. You know, I would ask them that. That's the best you've got. But I don't, but I think, Bill, I think... They have been asked that, mm -hmm. and one of the go-to responses is, well, all the charges are bogus, and all the women were lying, mm -hmm. and the Justice Department was skewed against him, and it was political persecution, and, right, Bill? Well, that, you're right, but let's use the counter. I'd say, okay, I hear what you say. Let's say it's bogus, but what president in the history of our country threatened 
the, the, our country with a bloodbath if he doesn't win. Now, yeah. that wasn't made up because he said it. Oh, no. yeah. Well, and, and there are people who said, uh, it was it was Kevin, what's his face from the Heritage Foundation? Said Kevin Roberts. Kevin Roberts said it would be a bloodless revolution if they let it happen. If the Democrats allow that. But also, Bill, to your point, these are individuals. I saw a yard sign that said, I'm voting for the felon. They don't care about, those are not, those, those, are, aren't, in, those aren't issues. Those aren't issues to them. I heard a caller once who will remain nameless say on 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 a, another show here on Civic Media that they believe that the president is amoral. Donald Trump. Which means without morals, but they're still going to vote for him. So we can talk about the convictions when we should. We can talk about the assault charges, and we should. And we should talk about the rhetoric, the 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 mental acuity that's certainly going away. But that doesn't bother them. It only enforces them. It only emboldens them because they feel like they're really against the man. And we're all the man, and they're the rebels. What do you think, Bill? Here's the good news, if you don't mind. Uh, the good news is that's a minority of our country that believes felons belong in the office of the presidency. That's why, like I've never seen before, we have Republicans for uh, Democratic president. Oh, yeah. In, in a, lot of, in a yeah. growing list. If I was running the ad campaign for uh, Kamala, that'd be the first thing I'd put on the uh, uh, ad. Join the list, join Americans. We believe in America. We don't believe in felons and join us. Now, yeah. there'll, there'll be a certain percentage that, that's off the wall, but who cares? They're so small. Their ship is taking water. They're going down. That's okay. Well, and, that's fine with me. And I don't disagree with you, Bill, on that one, but we can't get cocky about it. We can't get arrogant. We got to know that. Or complacent. We, while those individuals are still have a, because they're the loudest and the most entertaining, quote unquote, by the media, they are still, they're getting that voice out and they're still influencing people who say like, well, I don't know. I see a lot of people who like this Trump guy. So we have to be as fervent in our disapproval as they are in their approval. And this, honestly, this whole thing reminds me of Obama in 20, in 2008, when you saw just a bevy of Republicans and independents and voting for Obama because they didn't want the policies of George W. Bush coming via John McCain, especially in the in the sight of a of a financial meltdown. Yeah. So you saw a lot of people coming from the right saying, you know what, I don't agree with you on a lot of things, but I can agree that we need America to stay a great country. Thank you so much, Bill. Really, really appreciate it. Well, I'm trying to think of who Liz Cheney said it. She yeah. said. We can endure four years of bad policies. We can't endure someone who is willing to shred our constitution yeah. for his own gain. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. As we were doing a little back and forth, that first clip, of course, was from J.D. Vince. He'll be in town in Milwaukee on Friday. This is a little comparison. This is Tim Walls. Yeah. Calvin, let's play that clip, please. Like all regular people I grew up with in the heartland, J.D. studied at Yale had his career funded by Silicon Valley billionaires, and then wrote a bestseller trashing that community. Come on! That's not what middle America is. And I gotta tell you, I can't wait to debate the guy. That is, if, you, if he's willing to get off the couch and show up. So. Thing. hey Thing. <laughs> That was uh, Tim Walls. Minnesota governor, just doing a little side-by-side -side comparison of the vice presidential candidate uh, uh, picks, your your potentials there. Yeah. And we're going to include this in the show notes today. There is a brutal article in the bulwark today from Mona Sharon. Sharon the man-child versus the man's man. Mm, yes. Unlike J.D. Vance, Tim Walls offers a healthy masculinity. It's just honest and pretty unapologetic about, for one thing, all the challenges that men are facing and young boys in particular. And those are real things. Yes, they are. Men are struggling in society. Boys falling behind girls in grades and graduation rates. Men falling behind women in college attendance and connection to family and friends. Men are more likely than women to be lonely. Yes. So there, there are absolutely issues that our men and boys are facing but I don't think the J.D. Vance, Andrew Tate, Derek Van Bully type of masculinity 
is the healthy thing to aspire to. And pretty much the whole point of this article is Tim Walls is a good role model. Yes. Who would you choose to be a role model for your sons, J.D. Vance or Tim Walls? I said this to you before earlier that <clears throat> uh, if J.D., I'm sorry, if Tim Walls becomes the vice president, he's going to be a person for the first time in a long time where you can, I mean, Joe Biden was the same way when he was vice president. Just look at me like, hey, guys, this is something you can aspire to be. He's he's a hunter. He's he's a, he's a manly man, and if that's what's important to you. But he's also sensitive. He he can laugh. He can talk about his feelings. He loves. He can love unconditionally. That's what a man can do as well, and it's absolutely okay. Yes. And so, yeah, I I have a lot of feelings about Tim Walls that I will be talking about in the coming months because this candidate means a lot to me, and I'm bummed that I'm only coming to know him right now, <laughs> but. He is such a good man. Well, not according to uh, a Trump campaign spokesperson, and we'll get that in just a second. Tom from LA, we see you on the line. Stick around. Stay close. This is Matt Nair on air. You are listening to the Civic Media Radio Network. Welcome, welcome to Matt Nair on Air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, the Calvinator on the board, coming to you from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can always join us. You can call, you can text 855 752 4842. Leave a comment if you're watching in the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter. I have a brief confession. Um, we do all have access to our text line all the time. Yeah. And so I will check the text line during other shows mm -hmm. just out of curiosity and yeah. because I'm nosy that way. Yeah. And I saw a really nice comment from John from Hubertus who, who said he really likes the show yeah. and he listens all the time, but he never calls or texts because he doesn't feel like he has anything to add. Don't feel like that. Bull hockey, you have things you to can add. Always, you can always join the show. You can always call or text. Even if Eight, you want to say hi. Yeah, for sure. 855-752-4842. We were talking about your choice for Vice President J.D. Vance. Going to be in Milwaukee on Friday. Governor of Minnesota, Tim Walls, might be in town with Kamala Harris mm -hmm. next Tuesday. We will have more details about that, hopefully, over the next couple of days. So, Charles, cat ladies, be ready to attend. <laughs> Kamala Harris will be here. Tom from L.A. has been very patient. Thank you, Tom. What did you want to say? Hey, guys. Good morning. Uh, first off, I want to just thank Civic Media. Um, I want to thank Sage Wild. I want to thank you guys, all of you guys. I want to thank Mike Crute, who really started this whole thing years ago. Um, I think it made a difference, and I think it's making a difference in the state of Wisconsin and around the country. So thank you for what you do. Um, I'm hoping, um, as much as I loved um, Married with Children, I'm hoping that people start really realizing that Al Bundy was just a character on a show. That's a very old and reference, Tom. <laughs> I know, but it was not meant to be taken literally that you have to be a dumb guy that, you know, um, basically basically has to do whatever he can to get his toxic masculinity out there. You can actually be an actual guy like a Tim Wall, Coach Wall, um, you know, and, and still be okay with your masculinity, okay? So just, uh, you know, maybe follow a role, uh, example like Tim Wall's and your life actually might be a little bit better. Yes. Um, just, just saying. Yep, for sure, Tom. Thank you so much. Really yeah. appreciate it. Always appreciate you listening. Um, yeah. 
our men and some men and young boys are struggling. That's absolutely true. Yes, we are. And if we need good role models, I think Tim Walls is a pretty solid role model. And to some who will, who could say, well, he's just one man. Well, that one man will hopefully work to get programs out there to help other men, to help other people. I mean, this is, of course, this isn't just about men, but for, for a moment when we talk about men's mental health, it is a sad state to discuss. And someone like a Tim Walls who is empathetic towards other people who aren't like him might say, I'm going to champion this cause to help this group of people. Yeah. Like he did with the GSA, the Gay Straight Alliance in the high school. That's a really good... At. So this is not just about looking up to a man as an idol. He's not an idol. He's a man. He's a person. But trusting that a person like him and Kamala will say, all right, we need better mental health programs. We need better health care. We need better coverage. We need better help. And that will do the work it needs to do. And they will. So, yeah, I, I am full-blown fan of Tim Walls. I am too. Tim from Waukesha, listening here on WAUK. Thank you for the state fair tickets. You gave Michelle and I, we went last Saturday, had a great time. Good, Tim. I'm so glad you did. I always enjoy your show. Keep telling the truth. We try. We try to be accurate. <laughs> uh, listener on WISS, interesting, and that's an Oshkosh, interesting in an area where I live, mostly Trump. In the past, I'm only seeing a few signs of the stubborn ones that are still backing Cheeto Head in Green Lake County. <laughs> I agree with your past callers saying there are a lot of Republicans going to vote Democratic, and I think they're not going to be crowing about it necessarily. No, no. Might no. want to keep it to themselves. And and that's okay. If I mean, I understand if you're saying, all right, we can't have Trump. I got to vote for Kamala. I'm not happy about it, but this is the better alternative. I get that. And then in four years, you might vote for a better Republican, hoping that the GOP gets better because- Hopefully, if Donald Trump loses, that's the last we see of him in that place. Like, I don't think he's going to run for president at 82 or they're going to let him. They're going to they're going to try to make him a grand elder statesman. You know what I mean? Of the party. They can stand on their feet at the conventions. He can go make money on the on the the circuit of talks. Um, but. Maybe this is a chance for the GOP to start to heal themselves. I don't know. Well, Maybe I'm being naive. Uh, again, we're assuming that he's going to accept that, that he loses. It doesn't matter if he and, accepts it or not. If he, if he loses, he loses and he goes away. Well, yeah. But I just don't think he's going to run for president again for a fourth time. He's turning into Pat Paulson then. That's a very old <laughs> a reference. very ever. old reference. Wow. Thank you. I'm Thank amazed. You. I got that one. Yeah. Uh, Calvin. I mean, what... What needs to happen to the Republican Party is they need to return to Mitt Romney and Liz Cheney. But what I fear is going to happen is another populist firebrand will just take up the reins, whether Don Jr. cuts back on the cocaine a little bit or <laughs> hey something like that. But that's my fear. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I think that, you know, I, <laughs> I'm a person who grew up on Star Wars, so the idea of the evil emperor and all the sycophants and the people who would, you know, fall off a cliff for the person. I am, I guess my, I'm just hoping that it'll change or maybe they don't change for 10 years and they get worse and then they get better. I don't know. It just, it can't be a one party system. No. And I don't think anybody wants it to be a one party system. Uh, Nancy Pelosi said that Yeah, we so need a strong Republican party to, to have discussions, to have compromise. But that's why I think Turnout needs to be so massive in November. Mm -hmm. The victory needs to be enormous, yes. Yes. enormous yep. to put to rest some of this bogus. This was stolen. There was 9,000 yeah. mules this time. That was all BS. <laughs> the election wasn't stolen and it's not going to be stolen. No. Nope. And there's but, no proof there was stolen. Exactly. But, but please, let's not get complacent. Nope. Because yesterday was great. It was great to see that victory with us voting down those two constitutional amendments. Thank you to everyone who voted. But now we need to keep this passion going. We got 83 days. 83 days. 83 days, baby. 83 days. Let's keep and, it going. And a, a text sent to me personally. Shout out to my sister from another Mr. Asia for listening live. Love you very much. I love all our listeners. They're all great. They are fantastic. 
and they're going to stay with us. We yes, have news are. coming up next. Don't go away. You're listening to Matt Nair on air, coming to you on the Civic Media Radio Network. You bring me joy.